Okay. Um, Dr. Francis. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Dr. Francis. Okay. Um, Dr. Francis. Okay. Hello, good evening. And welcome to the Office of Research, Academic and Student Affairs of the University of Trinidad and Tobago presents Struggle and Redemption, Learning from Banya Belly Calypsos, a webinar in celebration of Calypso History Month 2020. By Calypsos, our stories are told, and by explaining those stories, we learn about the world. On behalf of the president, Prakash Prasad, and the National University, University of Trinidad and Tobago, it is my pleasure to extend warmest greetings. Today, I have with me a very esteemed panel, a panel of royalty, I would say. We have with us Tamiko Spicy Moore, who has been writing and singing Calypso since primary school. She's the reigning Bush monarch. And she is a graduate of the Masters of Arts in Carnival Studies program. She's a dedicated educator, and I would call her a shadow scholar. Welcome. We have Shalon Dread Wizard Bailey, who is a Calypsonian producer, songwriter. He has been performing since childhood and has studied at the University of the Calypso Tent under the direction of his father, Winston Shadow Bailey. Welcome. We have Devon Seal, who has been in the Calypso ring for over two decades. He is a Calypso monarch and a consummate performer, spreading Calypso globally as both a performer and the marketing director of Tuco. Welcome. And Mr. Wendell Roger Man Warren. I missed one. A singer, writer, producer, teacher, sound designer, and director with over 30 years experience in the performing arts. As one of the founding members of Three Canal, he has championed raps at home and abroad. And last but not least, we have Shirlene Hendrickson, a Calypsonian songwriter, MC, and currently the secretary of Tuco. She is also royalty, a Calypso queen, and a part of the Hendrickson dynasty, which is all rounder and lady wonder. Thank you all for joining. And I see Brother Resistance is signing on. Brother Resistance, you can hear us. Um, But Resistance is here to share um, greetings on behalf of Tuco, but I'm not sure if he's, he's able to connect um, properly. So, Brother Resistance, can you hear us? We're here, and I see just a son near the mic. Well, uh, while we are um, waiting to reiterate, and, and I say we have royalty with us this evening, I mean, we have royalty. We have crowns and dynasties represented. Um, today, we are looking at what we learned from Calypso about banning your belly. See, Trinidad and Tobago and the whole globe is on the brink of a serious economic turmoil thanks to COVID, climate change, social upheavals, and so on. Some of us are already feeling the dryness in the air as we move towards Gova season, have already started pulling our belts a little tighter, as tight as they can go. 
we might feel like we are on the brink of something new, but the global um, something, but the global um, existence we are heading to, we have been there before, and we have a template to follow, a template laid out in our native tongue, our calypso. So this afternoon, we will explore this template, how Calypso has warned us to prepare, comforted us while we suffer, and inspired us to not only survive, but also thrive through humor and our deep-rooted trinbeguniness, our deep-rooted trinbeguniness. We will discuss these three phases, preparing, enduring, and surviving, using selected examples. And... Um, Brother Resistance, are you with us? You can. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm. So I would like to welcome you now to, to bring greetings on behalf of Tuku and yourself this afternoon. Well, thank you very much. And as we celebrate Calypso History Month, um, we think it's extremely important that coming out of the halls of, of the University of Trinidad and Tobago, that we could have a program like this. And we hope that um, we will continue to have many more because active discussions about the power of Calypso music is extremely important to our lives and, as a matter of fact, to the whole nation building process. So, when we say Calypso instrument, we don't only mean um, performances, we mean really and truly that we can have active discussions about um, the, the, the contribution that Calypso has made and continues to make. To us here, not only in Trinidad and Tobago, but in the region and indeed the world. And that is why we say Calypso beyond boundaries and borders. So, on behalf of the Trinidad Bego Unified Calypso Men's Organization, we wish you enough success with this vibration as we flow into active discussions and mind blowing revelations moving forward. Stand firm for your culture because by Calypso, our stories are told. Thank you. So again, that, I think that's the warmest welcome we can get. So I want to just jump into the discussion. And I want to start with um, preparing to ban your belly, calypsos that discuss financial attitudes and ti in times of plenty and according to class expectations. So what I want to do is play, we will play three clips and then we will go into a nice round of discussion and the panel will have free reign to say what they think and how they interpret the songs and what we should learn. Well, the rich man had a wedding, high society wedding. He invited the governor. All he spent was $50, but the poor man had a wedding, big orchestra was playing, he had a hundred motor cars, and he spent a thousand dollars, but the balling rich man, poor man, who said I'm a poor man, I've got plenty dough, and I spread in joy for so. Rich man wearing dungaree, poor man wearing trouserine, they both have me trick. I can't tell you which is which, just because rich man say him poor, wanting so much more. He only drinking West Indian rum, and he balling for murder. Uh, poor man say him rich, fabulously rich. He only drinking whiskey and gin, and he driving motor car.
here that talk about how you prepare or how you should re behave financially consciously um, in times of plenty right before times of hardship so I want to open it up to the panel to get you know their thoughts and remarks on these four calypsos and how they relate to what do we learn about preparing what do we learn about the best laid plans like in the case of spoiler who had money in the bank but could not access it. Um, and, and the different responses to, to poverty and actually having cash in your pocket. So opening it up to the panel. Greetings, well. Um... First of all, let me just say what an honor and a pleasure it is to be in this company and in this setting. And um, happy Calypso History Month, one and all. Um, when, I, when I first got the opportunity to be a part of the discussion, I said yes immediately, because I love Calypso. And I love the idea that we could look at the situation that we're in right now and look at Calypso and say, what could we learn from what has, what, what has been said before? So. For instance, the rich man, poor man, and, and poor man by Maestro. Poor man by Maestro was a, a, a new song for me, a revelation. And I was struck by the sort of poor man, that, that, that inflection and throwing away the idea of the poor man. And where does the notion of being a poor man come from? Or who gets to decide who's a poor man from who's a rich man? Similar to rich man, poor man, but they all speak to behaviors that do not encourage thrift or financial security in the end, uh, which deep, speaks to deeper attitudinal um, aspects of self. But um, money in the bank, spoiler, I had a hard time understanding a lot was being said in the recording. 
But of course, since Butler's inimitable humor, he's dealing with a very serious situation. But as you say, having money in the bank and, can't, and not accessing it. Also, the perception that he's a louse for not sort of spending his money for more freely, which kind of ties into the idea of, you know, the rich, rich man spending $50 to have a wedding and the poor man spending a thousand dollars with a hundred motor cars. Um, but for me, the song, uh, This Place Nice, Valentino, is where it, it takes a turn. And I, I, one of my favorite lines in all Calypso is where he says, I cannot agree with my own chorus. And he, and, he, and he maintains that, that, that sort of dichotomy going down the line. And the idea that, you know, our fun-loving spirit does not serve us in the end. And, and the case he makes in verse two further, you know, the only people who, are, who can sing legitimately that Trinidad is nice is, you know, fellas like Kupalani, Maraj, and Y Deliver. And, um, you know, the names may have changed, but I think the situation remains the same all these years later. And then the, the thing that's really the clincher in that song is when he just throws in very casually almost the idea of revolution and change being on the way. So, um, yeah, very powerful, very, all, all the songs, but I like the progression in terms of from an attitude of almost a victim position to we could, we could change this thing. We could change this thing. So I, I, thanks. Good selections. <laughs> Thank you. I like yeah, the whole. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Shirley. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right, Dean. I like the whole idea of masking, mm -hmm. because in rich man, poor man, you know, it seems as though the rich man is somewhat masking, and maybe that because of his his affluent status in society, he can call on the governor, you know, and it won't cost him anything. Maybe just you know a phone call if you compare it in our time. Whereas the poor man, he wants the world to know, you know, he's getting married and a thousand cars and, you know, the full nine yards. And he thinks that he's going to gain respect and admiration. He's creating this impression. When sometimes really and truly after the wedding is finished and everything, he's either left with the, the exorbitant bills if he doesn't have the capital to put out, you know, and it's a sort of um, maybe the, the environment where, where they are coming from, you know, it's, it's always and it has been like that. On the other hand, you get it straight from Maestro. Stop the foolishness, you know, stop wasting time. We have money, but we must know how to constructively manage your money and stop crying. You just keep crying right through, but the money is being wasted. You know, you prefer to buy brands and sport the gold and the jewelry, where in his opinion, that could be put to some better use when you could still have the gold, you know. And huh, Uncle Valentino, this place nice. Before the, the early days when I had used to, you know, we used to sing that, Trinidad is nice, Trinidad is a paradise. Because just like right now, beach is going to open up. You understand me? As a matter of fact, Brian Lara Promenade in town was never, you know, lost for, for the want of humanity around. The, the storm passed, the tree fell, and right where the tree fell, men and women are sitting, and these are not little children, eh? These are grown folks. Right there, with their mask pulled down, the bottle right by their feet, you know, life is nice, this is Trinidad and Tobago. And even when Oxford described us as being number one, in a few short space of time, in a matter of months, you know, the eight and nine deaths went to a hundred and, you know, we crossed a hundred. And still, we, some of us are still going about, you know, life like this is Trinidad and Tobago. As a matter of fact, if we call Carnival now in the morning, we're ready like puppy because it's part of who we are. It's the uniqueness. Not that some of us are not conscious and unaware of the, of the, you know, the difficulties, the challenges posed health-wise, the risks involved. Some of us are adhering to government's mandate. But on the other hand, this is what it is. And then, spoiler, and I agree with Wendell, I had some problems, you know, the audio in understanding some of the words, but you know, he's such a, a, a unique Calypsonian, Togo and Spoilo. You know, it's only spoiler with word, rhyme words like that, and you took to garner your interest from the first two lines, and then you wonder a man has money and is not, he cannot access it. 
didn't somebody around him, you know, educate him and opening an account or when he went to the bank, you know, and he just can't see that part, but he has money. On the other hand, he's to his masking. The whole world knows he has money, but they don't understand because maybe they think he's selfish, but he cannot access it. So, you know, it's 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 wonderful. And I, Devon, talk, talk to me now. <laughs> Thanks. Um, what I um, enjoyed most about the first two is that basically they spoke about the habits of, you know, what fosters that wealth and um, success, what is perceived to foster that wealth and success. So for the poor man, it is, um, he thinks that, you know, flashing his money and showing off and buying the whiskey and thing, that is what is all associated with wealth. And um, basically, you know, listening to the two songs, you recognize that um, the rich, they operate differently. You know, what, they, what, what, what you got is that they make the money and they hush them out. Eh? Hush them out and they'll do, make the money, hush them out and don't say nothing according to uh, Shilin. They keep them out very quiet and not much energy is, um, not much emphasis is there to, to showcase their wealth. So you heard that in both, both, um, both Briner, Lord Briner, and uh, Maestro's composition. The spoiler now, you know, yes, he had the money, and I think the, the, the message going there is, um, you know, that, that message of building your financial net and having your financial net. Even though he didn't have access to it, you know, it was still there, the money in the bank. So he was showing his, um, well, I couldn't gather all the lyrics in the song, but basically the message is that I have money in the bank, which is important during this time to us even, and as of now, in fact, where we are experiencing this whole pandemic is all about accessing. Sometimes you're putting aside for a rainy day and accessing. So he inherited his own, but at the end of the day, he was saying that, yeah, I have my safety net there, yeah, my money in the bank. And well, um, Brother Valentino, Trinidad is nice. Trinidad is a paradise. Um, still applicable today, according to um, what Wendell would have said. Some of the names might have changed. And another thing too, in that song too, when he says revolution is coming, um, revolution is on its way. I think um, we have evolved now because listening to that song too, there are some secrets, there are some secret black money people today, where he might not have referred to them in, in, in that past there, in the, in the 70s, 80s. So that is, that is a revolution in itself, you know? So, I mean, four very good selections. I enjoyed all of them. I wasn't too familiar, like um, Wendell, I was not familiar with my shows, poor man, but I mean, I enjoyed all. Thank you. Thank you. Either um spicy or yeah, spicy. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for having me here. Um, I want to start with with who I would call Uncle Valley. Uncle Valley is um Trinidad is nice. Um, it's laced with sarcasm, right? And uh, to me, it's supposed to be we having fun in this place, and everybody poor. But Trinidad's still nice because we get to do X and we get to do Y. And with um, rich man, poor man, and the poor man, I find that there is a big similarity in both songs, even though they were done decades apart. But they're still expressing the same sentiments for both songs. Um, that's my contribution. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good, everybody. Uh, one of the things that consistent in all the songs, though, and I guess do because the collection has, especially the writer, the songwriter, they has always been had ability to see the bigger picture, hence the gift. You know, so each song individually create on make it understand a separation. But at the same time they show the separation, they also give you some blueprints in it now because they show you controlling, why, why they're controlling, 
we are like, like as, as for instance, um, Brian and the rich man, poor man, sure you will, poor man always have trying to prove himself, but the rich man understand it unnecessary, you know? Um, but it's kind of interesting because Brother Valentino's song, This Space Nice, is actually a favorite of mine now. And I favorite, actually, I'm a father's do because he, from the story I get between him and, and Valentino, is that Winston Bailey sing chorus in that song. Um, but the, the sarcasm, the use of the sarcasm, it, it, it touch on the, the kind of a mentality. And like Wendell, you see that line? I can't say Rodri in my own chorus. That, that is a level of truth to self then, you know? But I mean, one thing stands with each song is, is that they, they, they give the imagery that it has a separation, an understanding of the separation, but also touch each touch on the attitudes of each side, you know? Thank you. And um, it's very interesting. Now, I put the spoiler song in there because poor man, rich man, poor man, and poor man are advising you be thrifty, save your money. And then spoiler goes, well, I've been saving my money, but the rich people put their money on top of mine, so I can't even use the money I'm saving. And so we get back to this idea that um, of class restrictions in terms of, of being able to financially prepare. And that leads us into the next section where we're talking about enjoying the Gova season. Who really suffers in the Gova season? Um, what is it like? So we have three songs that paint a picture of what it's like um, and two songs that talk about how we react it. So I'm going now to share. Um, Don't do that. Haha. <laughs> that was not as smooth as I liked, but we're going on to share um, the three songs for our next section. <laughs> Strong and out. All alone he was left to grieve. 
she had an ex-man in salt, she said, oh please, I really love you Johnny, but you will have no money, so what will my future be even though you love me, we can't love without money, we can't make love on hungry belly, Johnny, you'll be of your my turtle dove but no money no love so there we have a song from the mighty shadow one from brother resistance and one from sparrow all dealing with what it's like to live through bang a season go over season and what it how it effect, affects us so again opening it up to the panel and i'm um, knowing I, that there are far more songs we could add here so feel free if you want to call other titles it's an all an education so go ahead i'll start on this one so um when we look at poverty as hell poverty as hell examine all the reasons that we need money right and it's the same thing with no money no love sparrow was expressing that if you if as a man i don't have that kind of money to give you then as a woman i yeah i wouldn't get anything <laughs> right because it's all about having money so he was getting the importance of money in both songs um, what was the other song? I can't take that. I can't Russian take that. I can't take that. Again, we're expressing all the uses for money. I wake up in the morning and there's more retrenchment. I can't take that. All the reasons why we don't have money. Yeah. Um, I would tie all three songs together, just like you did, Dr. Francis, because while they're expressing the same sentiments of want and the use for money it also shows that it's only the poor people at that time who have only wants and the use for money yeah thanks thank you well um well sparrow touch a serious situation here you know i mean where society is just based upon having, you know, um, and actually from that standpoint, he also explained to you where it could affect personal life not having. So it's not a decision you could make to not have now. Yeah, you have to have them because, I mean, I could love you as much, but if you have nothing to offer me, come on, very hungry, you understand? You have to fix the gas pain. You know, so I like how that, that that song kind of just show us a kind of hidden, a hidden story that is going within our culture now, you know? I mean, I think Shallow Looking for Horn will cover this, a similar situation too, you know, which take me to the Shadow Poverty is here. Now, the thing in that song, um, this is coming from a man who once tell in the 70s, he's the king from hell. And I do think people understood in that time when he was saying king from hell, what is the hell he was talking about now? It wasn't being Lucifer, Satan, and all these biblical characters now. But what Shadow was talking about is he came from a place where suffering is an everyday thing, not having is an everyday thing. Um, and what he says is that I conquered this and became the king. I am the king of it. But I think what he did to Trinidad Tobago with poverty is hell was explain what that hell was now. Because I mean, I don't think any Kaisunian in Trinidad Tobago has ever explained poverty in the level as poverty is hell, but the angels are in paradise driving in lemons and everything nice and clean. Which is like the, the, the songs before, which I talk about the system of class and you know and, and finance now. So, I mean, poverty is hell is like one part 
reality, but also on part empowerment song because I mean, what this song touch on, where it would have touched on other people going through some hardships and to and toil. What what this song also gave you was that it has a section of this world that beyond the hell that poverty is seem to be surviving a pick out to survive like the ten little children and the and, and the dump and the four dumpling, you know, from the, the situation where the the man who been who got all the nice dreams to realize here they have nothing at all and all of that now. You know, but to, to be around to for him to tell that story that this man exists now means that there are a lot of people in Trinidad and Tobago who actually are surviving this now and, and figuring out ways around it, which the people who do who the angels who don't drive the limousines figure out how to survive in hell now. But as for resistance in taking that, I mean the total stand up and defend yourself song now. You know, no matter. You know, let, let you know that you are part of this country and should be a part of the decision making. And I and I I give so much to my country. Is also recognizing your your, your country had to serve you the same way. You understand? Because I man say squeeze blood out a stone, you know, for the sake of your country. So all you're looking back is for you to take care of me now. You know, and I think that is within this song in taking that, I think he identifies that um that you in control, you do have to settle for less, you know, stand up and let them know we ain't taking that, that's so. Okay. Oh, don't, don't, don't give me that ear. Yes, Wendell. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, you choose three giant songs there, but that, that, that middle section of this whole thing is real busted songs you, you pick there. Um, just to pick up from Charlotte, I learned something big there with that king from hell. And that hell coming from suffering and struggle and transcending. This song is pure genius because from the opening, it, 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 there's a downbeat that is relentless and driving and there's a grinding nature to the song. And he so vividly describes a grinding condition, a grinding poverty, but not one that, that has you worn down. It just is your condition. And that, that opening of the imagery of poverty being hell, but the angels being in paradise, that span is quite a span. And he goes from this huge span to boom, a poor man living in a pinguini hut and takes you into a whole next zone, a reality, and a whole around the world in, 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 in two minutes, you know, from the boy and the turning into a bandit and getting shot and appearing in court and you touch on the dumpling, but but for me, the sequence in that song where the dreams and he dream and he dream and he dream, he dream, and the repetition of that dream is a potency in the power of that dreaming. So we're dealing with, you know, magical, mystical vibrations, images for days on a Shakespearean level, real potent images, slicing up a dumpling, tin, 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 to feed all these people. The, the whole interplay with that cheeky chong. So, what I think people just inherently can respond and relate to this song, no matter what. For me, it's like Ravel's bolero is relentless. It keeps just going and going and going and going. And um, I heard it driving up the road the other day. Long time I hadn't heard it. And I was like, wow, this is truly a massive, massive, magical song. The next one for the resistance, well, there was a time when I was daring to step in the, the ring and I had resistance record on repeat along with Lancet Lane recordings on a cassette and Black Stalin. But you see this, I can't, I can't take that, is probably one of the most direct addresses to, to the people in authority, you know? And, um, you know, as you say, he sweat blood out of stone and he, he not taking that, and by, by extension, the number of people that give and give and give, not taking that. I like that. I like the more fire nature of that. I like the strength and the stance of it. I think is an atom of empowerment and it will never, ever, ever lose its potency because it's said with such truth and, and conviction. And then the final song there, No Money, No Love, well, as a little boy, that was one of the melodies that stick in my head from early and that refrain of No Money, No Love was one of them things that you would hear easily tossed out. So you have a song that touches on a very serious 
um, situation, social situation that will interplay man, woman, how we're going to love when we have no means to love. And the, the irony of the song is the sweetness of the song. The melody is so sweet. Yeah, and Max Barra really shows off he could real sing in that song. You know, and there's Ivy who pack up and say she gone, you know, she can't take it. Uh, but, and then it ended up in a big fight and the whole village come out and whatnot. Um, another one of those songs where the imagery is so potent and the melody and the delivery. So there's a lot that we can learn from all these songs when you're in the midst of, of the belly of the beast, of, of the grinding poverty and the oppression and you know the misunderstanding between man and woman and how we're going to make it. Because when you open the papers on a daily basis, you're seeing that manifesting in many, many ways. You know? So we ain't pass it. So you need to learn from what's been said before so we can find means to deal with it. Let me just start off by saying that I wish and hope that the radio DJs and announcers listening into this webinar, this program, because right now these you see this tree you have here, like Wendell, actually see like you, you, you took a time and you study how to put this, this tree back together. You know, like when in, in the tent, the pretender and they will ask who going behind that? Well, who going behind this tree? Because it was, you know, a threesome well put together, epitomizing economic and social sustainability in three different aspects. And Shadow took the grassroots poverty is hell. Real poverty is hell. And even with the level of poverty, you will still see a mother or a sister learning how to slice up the thing, tin, 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 so that everybody got a little niam in the same tin, tin, tin. And you know, those people survive. They might have their little health challenges, but those people survive. And then it would draw you to where he's talking about the little boy on the mango tree, the green mango hot in up his belly, but still you're finding a joy in eating the chow chow from that, you know? And I like how we open it up when Charlon talk about poverty is hell, but the angels are in paradise. You understand me? And they're driving fancy car. The paradise is right here. So in our blessed land, Trinidad and Tobago, you have this, this two levels of economic, social, political, sustainability levels right here, right next door. You know, in one aspect, you have a man and his family extended on nuclear, enjoying it. And right next door, you have a next man wondering, well, how he going to feed, put bread on the table? And then you have brother resistance, as Wendell rightfully said, I just can't take that. You know, and I often wonder why we can't get together as a people, you know, and just voice it, make the democracy of the thing be heard. We're not taking that, you know. I walk my finger to the bone for this country. I make blood out of stone for the country. If you just listen to the opening lines alone, well, even if you didn't like what you're wearing or how we look, you must listen to the opening lines of those two. And then it draws to the, to the sweetness to use Wendell's word. No money, no love. I remember my brother when he was born and he started to walk and talk from the time he could understand the Queen's language. It was all of us girls, our sisters. My father would always talk to him. Listen, you see them there, them girls there? Right. I take my time and I make sure that they are well schooled, well this. You better don't shame me, go out there and take nobody girl child. You understand? But if you can't take care of that girl child, you understand? Don't worry to, to be in the house, to come home, that kind of thing. And imagine that level of morals and values and ethics, you know, the one eye treatment, you know. You want eye treatment, you will know to let your top lip meet your bottom lip and you know that man, hush him out. When big people talking, that's the, the poor man's language, but it worked. So out of this came a sense of empowerment where to this day, but today you think you could tell a child or watch them that say something wrong with your eye? Why are you watching this? Oh, you know, so there's a difference. 
So the, these three really epitomize, you know, in preparation for how do we sustain ourselves as a people who have always been stigmatized as coming from either behind the bridge. Because if you notice, even if you weren't from behind the bridge and you didn't have that economic status, but you came from the other side of town, you were still viewed upon as, as okay, that's, that's, that's the nice family there. That's even if it was one dumpling to slice and four, but immediately when you cross the bridge, you see them people there, well, mm -hmm. So uh, I really like the, the, those three that you put together there, poverty as hell, I can't take that, but yet still no money, no love. Yeah, it's interesting that um, you know these three songs came together here, and um, what I appreciate is Shalon mentioning about the hell, because prior to this evening, I would not have associated that hell as the hell of poverty. poverty. You know, so I appreciated that. I mean, poverty as hell remains a classic. It remains a classic. The lyrics, it is real. I mean, you sit down and you can, I, I'm just the bit you played there a while ago. You sit down and you can see it. You can see it, the imagery. You know, it is real poverty, real poverty. Um, I mean, Shadow, he went way beyond in that one. The music, you know, the haunting music. You know, and I like how Shirley said, you know, even though, yes, you talk about the poverty, yes, we um, mentioned about the poverty, still shows that um, that person really trying to make it happen, you know, the child, the cutting up of the bread, you know. Um, in terms of, I can't take that, protest, revolutionary music, you know, I can't take that, we ain't taking that so very powerful, still powerful today. Um, you know, it's one of those songs where, like, you know, the protestant would be like, we want we money right now. I can still see this one here, you know, people singing. And I can't take that, we ain't taking that so. Very powerful and well, sparrows, no money, no love. Just basically voice again to the um, sentiments of the poor. It is, um, you know, we could look at it in this way too. Right now with um, the pandemic, you know that a lot of people are under some challenges. It is challenging for a lot of persons out there. And we recognize to based on the data coming forward that there is some kind of increase in domestic violence. So, you know, there might be some kind of direct relationship with no money, no love. Thank you. Thank you. And I like how you all brought up um, the, the sharing up of the dumpling. It ties in very well with the next segment that we will go be going into in developing coping mechanisms. But it's very striking that in the midst of such severe poverty, you are looking out for other people. And um, it seems like this attitude is waning right now. It's more about looking out for the individual rather than looking out for the community. But in poverty as hell, they survive by looking out for the community. Um, and that, and then too, as uh, Wendell was pointing out, that dream sequence, that dream sequence becomes very big. And then if we tie the dream sequence in with um, Atta Clan and, and Shadow's song, Come and Atta Dreamy Dream. And that too then tells you it's, it's not just being in, um, it's not where you are, but it's how your attitude to where you are. And so being, even though he wakes up and the pocket is empty, being able still to dream himself out of that situation will give him momentum to move forward. So I like how, you know, bringing up these points is very interesting. Um, and then something really to consider that domestic violence and no money, no love. And how do we, measure what it means to be human when your pocket's empty. So thank you so much for your contributions. And that ties us into the next segment, um, surviving hardships and what teachers um, Calypso teaches us about adapting, surviving, and sometimes even thriving in the midst of hardship. Uh, 
Fernando Duque. Trinidad Rio. Merry New Year, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is straight, die-hard, genuine, authentic Kaiso. And this is how the story goes. I went to public utilities and tell them, disconnect them facilities. Cause me you want them. I try to contact the ombudsman, but never in office. I'm going to file me an injunction on the public service. But every time a heavy rain fall, by me don't have no warrant at all. They spoil me TV, they spoil me fridge. They nearly kill me with low voltage. Now before they make me a lunatic, I'm going back to basic. I'm going and get a flambo and lamp with me. I'm going back to basic. Right about now, I'm bringing on stage a fella. He is no stranger. Because about two years ago, they said he was the free show, Calypso King. He come back again, he get tired with some cups. When he went to get one cup, two cup, three cup, he couldn't get the rest. In 1992, he said that Calypso ain't making when carnival finish. They're throwing it aside. So what he decided to do is to open a ponytail shop. The name of the song, The Poor Man's Ponytail Shop. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome on stage Trinidad Rio.
I must admit, it's very hard to pause that song. Um, but there you have it. Uh, there's three different songs, again, dealing with ways of not just living through poverty, but coping with poverty in very creative and what I would say very Trinbagonian ways. Um, I want to open it up to get panel feedback. Well, um, I want to say one thing. You see, in this quarantine, COVID times, Rio is a man I need to take advice from. Rio always does tend to cover all the things need to be done. You understand? Rio, Rio experience from your understanding of being a crucial case, okay? But you see that, that's back to basic. It's like survival first aid, you know? Um... Now, yes, he would have used the examples of yesteryear to, to, to strengthen his point now. But what Rio gave us some valid, valid points, you understand? And especially in this kind of situation right now where anything can happen, we don't know where tomorrow is. Rio is the man. I, I think I, I need to give up on career number, right? Because, I mean, he always is something. I mean, I actually back to basics is one of my favorite from him too. The army. Well, the poor man furniture shop. I think it's a really important thing because um, we're in a situation where we do have we do have actually performers and people entertainment artists. We don't have a place really and truly really where we just um we can perform right now because I mean we know the situation. So I think what we're really doing within poor man furniture shop is explain to you that. Check yourself, you see other talents, put it to use, you know? Um, so real being a chase man tell you, I mean, in true Kaiso form, yo, besides Kaiso, I could build a cupboard or two, you know? And in true Kaiso style with no draws. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the first, thing, the first thing that I noticed since with um, Rio's furniture shop was that is double on tour. So he having problems with money, times hard, economy hard, and the only how that he could build these covers is with no drawers, <laughs> right? Um, Ultimate re Rejects, that's a Trinidadian song because that is a Trinidad attitude to everything. We have no money, all kind of thing happening. All we need to do is take a jam, hold them and walk them. That is why the chorus was so powerful and it was able to win a road match because everybody just wants a party. So hold them and walk them. Walk away all your stress. And if you're hungry, hold them and walk them still. You know, um, with back to basics. Times hard with paying bills, right? And if every time you're paying these bills, you're still having the problems of Tiantec cutting the electricity whenever they feel. If I had a lamp, I wouldn't have those problems. You know, um, Wasa taking the water all the time, Rio couldn't flush the toilet. The man decided to build a whole latrine <laughs> and vinyl and lights. I and arm himself with flit because we know what's going to happen if he don't arm himself with flit to go in there, right? So he was explaining what the poor man would have been going through in that time. It was three real good songs, putting them together nice. <laughs> you know, and I just want to um, keep it back on what Spicy said there with the ultimate rejects. That um, the ultimate rejects, Philip. So you see, Trinidad, it, it, it ties it right back to the Valentino song, this place nice, eh? Trinidad is nice, is a paradise, the same kind of behavior. You know, we, we, uh, in fact, today, I'm sure after the, um, while waiting on the Prime Minister's press conference, people were still waiting to hear some kind of thing to go down and really enjoy the self down in the avenue, you know? So it, um, that's a link. It's just a modern version of, you know, Trinidad is nice, Trinidad is paradise. Um, with respect to Rio's Back to Basic, now it's very simple, but deep, very deep. And we see that this song would have been probably most likely in the 80s, right? Late 80s. 
because I think he mentioned about Telco in it. So that means TSCT didn't exist yet. And it seems as if the problems still exist with the public utilities. We still hear people complaining about water, right? I mean, yes, I, I could say that PNT, they have, they, they have improved. Um, TSCT, we hardly have landline now, but I mean, the, with the mobile operators, both TSCT and DG said, we don't have a landline much again, but we still get dropping calls. We still, sometimes we still, um, DG said, we'll eat out, your, eat out your, um, your top ups. So, you know, it's the same thing. Basically, you have to go back to basics, and these problems still exist. And, well, um, well, first for it here, for it here, no drawers, a bead. That on all is back is going back to basics as well, eh? <laughs> That alone in itself is going back to basics. I mean, three wonderful selections, excellent selections. And um, you see, is Rio, he said he listened a lot to Pretender. And it's coincidental, or I mean, there's some kind of link in it that Pretender Santos never ever worry. No mind how things looking bad, eh? So, I mean, as we um, take home here. Yeah. This one. I just wanna, I just wanna say by Calypso stories are told. So here we are in 2020, right? And we have a, a government, the recovery plan committee, you know. And I, I thought that they could have just tap in to some of these calypsos because they're going back to basics. We have to go back in order to come forward again with new innovative mechanisms. Because just this morning, I had to use the phone to listen in to the webinar because the internet just dropped in Shafford. I mean, it just went out, you know, so, so thank God for the phone. And we, in as much as we progress in, you know, we, 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 we say that we are technologically advancing, but like we seem to be going two steps backward because you wonder the level of expertise and how, how much consultation we're going into the fray and what they're really coming up with as, as, as brainstorming as they were. And when you look at what he is saying, look, I just had to just dig a hole and ease myself. No more flushing. This is just what it is, going back to the latrines and the outhouses, as we would say, you know, in order to move ahead because he's wasting time, he's paying bills, the, you know, the ombudsman still in helping, you know, and then in, in order for, for his sustainable um, development, you know, and I had the opportunity of interviewing Rio for the Carnival Institute and coming from his childhood days where he, the, the family, the, most of the children grew up in the orphanage and he still blessed the fact that they were privileged for that experience as well as having that natural ability to, to carve wood, to make furniture, to, to be given the, the opportunity to work in American stores, you know, and all those places he listed out. And then, as Spicy said, the double and tan, you know, to sit down and write a calypso and to talk about no drawers, you know, one time you get an anchor, you know, who builds, who builds a cupboard with no drawers, you know, that alone should tell you something, you know, this is very unique. And he is thinking of using his talents and his skills. And in the last verse, employing, opening up the business because you know, the Rio, you're doing so good. You're not going to expand on your business. Oh yes, and I will employ the ladies. And, and look where he positioned them. You know, he strategically placed them so that the no drawers could be immediately be envisioned, you know. And then full extreme, as Shalon said, brought me right back to Uncle Valentino. This place nice. This place really nice, you know. Inside the COVID in the first way, we had COVID party. It wasn't for the police. COVID parties were going on. Again, on Brian Lara's promenade, you would wonder if COVID is really in the air because man taking a drink at the side, you know, nothing in stopping the Trinbagonian, you know. And that may be, as, as ironical as it is, that shows our creativity and our uniqueness. So another tree you put together inside their mouth, you know, Rio was able to hit us with two back to basics and the poor man's furniture shop, which if you look in every, um, 
in every village, there is always some establishment mm -hmm. inside of there that we could tune into, you know, we remember Mr. This shop and by the shop by the corner, you know, and what we could get trust, you know, and your payback when you get pay, you know, so this really lends to our, our vision, opening up our expansion, how we think, and it also prepares us for better economic sustainability. Yeah, well, Rio, Rio is, is a genius. We had the, we had the honor of singing in the tent briefly, and uh, Rio is one of them fellas I look forward to every single night and learn so much from, even though his style is so different from what we do, but a master storyteller. And to be able to employ humor the way he does, and the power of humor, you know, they say in one of the things that has been recommended for dealing with the anxiety of the of the situation we're in is to laugh, you know, watch something funny, stop watching all our news because it's just building up more and more anxiety. And I actually took note of it in hearing the song just now. He says, before they make me a lunatic, I decide to go back to basics. So that whole idea of being on the edge, of being on the verge of, of, of cracking and being proactive and choosing, choosing a lifestyle that is, you know, less of less expense and less worry and less less care uh, for one's survival is, is a crucial lesson. And, and the power, the importance that I could choose to do this. I could choose to put aside all these modern amenities and whatnot, because I always tell plenty of them, my friends, when the grid goes down, how many of us will be able to survive? You know, How many of us will be able to go and pull something out of the ground and eat and whatnot? I mean, I'm not even ready for that. But the idea of these songs are there to remind us. No draws. Well, when I heard it the other day, I was like, what is this? this? I mean, I know the song, but you know, when you're listening to something again, it's like the Dublantan and, and the, the repetition and you're looking forward to the punchline being deployed as it goes along and the evolution of the story. So that by the time it reaches to the end and he's now opening up more business because his, the business is, is um, doing so well. Um, that's very powerful and full extreme is speaks to an indomitable spirit. So no matter how bad, no matter how dread, no matter how horrible the situation, there's something inside of us that affords us to celebrate life to the fullness. There's something inside of us that affords us to replenish life, you know, to believe that, you know, we will carry on and on and on. And, and the idea of, you know, just throwing it all and, liking yourself and the repetition of we do business, we do business, that sort of takes you into a whole other zone. It's almost as not because like you say, it's very difficult to stop that song, you know, because it takes you along right? and it's opening up a vortex of energy and release and as that's science and spirits and medicine that coming from down in the back of the chamber that's coming forward, you know, stuff that you, you, you can't explain acts on you. You know, I remember when I first heard that song, I just felt that out there, that song, something about that song, that song had it, it had the thing in it, whatever the thing is. Yeah, so three powerful songs, and as I say, humor as, as, as a means of coping, humor as a release, and, and trusting on your native resourcefulness is some of the things that will help us to survive. And that spirit that is always there no matter what, the city burned down, the economy crash, the recession, whatever going on, we jam in still. Yes, um, I would say one of the, uh, this might be controversial to say, but one of the elements that make that sound so irresistible is they choose a really good sample. Oh yeah. Um, what's, the, what's the sample that they use there? <laughs> um, they sample shadow. Of course, well, yeah, yeah. So, so um, everybody should sample shadow. <laughs> everybody, every, everybody sample shadow. No, 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 guys, that is not a sample. That, that is a run with bass man and masking. Uh, ah, masking, boy, masking. <laughs> yes. Come on, I, you can hear the bass line. It's there, the drum beat, it's there. That's yeah. always a combination of, that is this bass nice with bass man music. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, but imitation is in sense form of flattery, is all I can say in that regard. 
And I would also say imitation is limitation. Ah! <laughs> now the talk getting spicy. <laughs> um, I, I would be more generous and and link that that spirit that that baseman had, because baseman came out of nowhere and won road match, and that spirit is channeled in um. Channel in Fuller Stream by using it again, and that it came out of nowhere and swept Road March. But what makes um, what makes Full Extreme interesting is that we do get that marriage between Trinidad is nice and that deep spirituality in Baseman coming together. That that tension um, is very interesting. And I remember in 2017 when it came out, and we were trying to have our little Quite toity intellectual conversations about full extreme. And there were two interpretations. Was it satire or was it indomitable spirit? Um, because on the one hand, is a satire like this place is nice, where look, serious things going on, get serious and do something about it. Or is it that indomitable spirit as with poor man furniture shop? Or going back to basics where y'all can keep all your thing. I will I will survive how I know how to survive. I, I um, took a, a clue, a clue from the opening lyric. You know, right now I'm feeling good. That whole sense of I the way I feeling right now, mm. in, a, in a, almost an unstoppable zone and whatnot. So I I didn't I never took it on a satirical level. I was uh, the, there are times when we talk, like when Rada talks about permission to mash up the place, there's that aspect of this of the festival that many of us don't really understand. When we start dealing with big energies and, and big forces mm -hmm. and stuff, and playing Juve over the years, we we touch on that little bit, you know. We get to appreciate that carnival ain't no full full space, you know. And there's certain energies that can manifest that could be, you know, destructive to be recreative to re to regenerate new life in a sense, you know. And I I thought that this song was touching on stuff like that. Just just to add though, because it's an interesting thing I just want to share. Have to go too far. It was interesting that these two songs we just talked about the, that um Koshima is meaning this place nice and bass man. Because ironically, both composers sang chorus on the original version of each song. There was a situation where they had could not no chorus, they could, could not afford the chorus. So each man sang chorus. So Shadow sang chorus on this place nice and Brother Valentine sang chorus on bass. You know? So I guess you know, all it have a lot of factors, and nice little energies behind it. But all in all, I think full extreme touch the carnival mentality that Brother Van Tio was speaking about in this place. Nice, you know that. Don't matter the obstacle we come with. We, don't matter what we we fed in culture. Something that is also therapy now, and it help you survive some of the worst times. And you know, I think that's really some capture. I mean, it used a lot of elements we're familiar with, <laughs> but I think all in all, musically, that they, they, they was aiming for, you know, that that festive that festive spirit against all odds, you know, and that that that, that is something in that song that cement. Okay, um, I will, we're going to open up for questions in a little bit. I just want to see what how the panel feels about connecting, um. Going, both going back to basics and poor man furniture shop with um, poor man rich man and the underlying message of, as, as Wendell said, forget all those, you know, expensive, luxurious things and go back to basic. That's how you will survive. And where we have in poor man, rich man and poor man, a kind of didactic, a kind of preaching, almost talking down to why don't you do this? This is what you're supposed to do. Rio takes humor and flips the message in a way that I can accept it because you're not, a, you know, I'm not, I'm not being blamed for my own poverty then. Um, and I want to open it up and see what you think about that and making those kind of connections. What with any of the songs? Well, that that thing is the power of humor is that you know but when, when you're being didactic if somebody feels that you're you're talking at them they they will re put up a resistance you know whereas if you use humor they many times after you have a good laugh you can say yeah boy that, that's the idea there you know i could i could take this approach or that approach the idea that 
you know, rich man, poor man, and poor man by maestro, they, they're pulling no punches. They're looking at what's going around them and saying, look, do better, buck up, take responsibility. But that's one approach. And we often realize that that approach doesn't really get nowhere, you know, because people become more entrenched, more resistant, more determined to just do what they want. Um, so I think the idea of humor, which is what Spoiler and Rio both used to great effect, and Shadow is sometimes in, in his, in his whimsy, whimsiness, there's an element of humor. You know, the way he would put certain words together, maybe some kind of chuppity, little boy named Corduroy. It's like, what, what, yeah, what is that, right? But it, it doesn't leave your brain, you know, the time you don't walk with Jacob because Jacob does walk and shake up. Serious, serious commentary in, seem, in seemingly nonsensical lyrics. For me, there's a power in that that we tend to discount. Yeah, I'd like to just, you know, look at the three, the back to basics, the poor man's furniture and the, the rich man, poor man. And Wendell is correct. The, the humor, even though, you know, sometimes we would say, oh, go again and listen to all them serious guys. So, you know, people want to tell you something, some talk down to you about how you live in, man, why you're spending so much money, you know. You're spending on brands and whatnot. And at the same time, save your dollar for a rainy day. But then again, when you have the creativity of the humor, you know, that's what you will remember for days. And you'll be singing along, boy, no drawers, boy. But, you know, I'm building my cupboard, you know. You know, I could put the drawers in a different way. So it all depends on how it is executed. What, we, what we're saying that will lend to the longevity what you will retain here, you know, even though, you know, it's a serious message because it's a very, very serious message. Back to basics, the poor man's furniture shop. At the same time, it's a stress reliever. At the same time, you're looking at the, the rich man, poor man, and the masking, you know. I, 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 I don't have to spend a thousand dollars. Well, that was back in the day now. Now it is 10,000, 20,000. I don't have to have a thousand cars. I don't have to invite this one unless I have sponsors, unless the money was there, unless I would have, you know, made the effort to save for a rainy day, you know. And then Uncle Shadow would have been telling us, you know, in the other Calypso, um, what are you, what you going to do? Give a KFC every day? You know, you, you can't boil rice? You know, you have to make sure that you have laid down your foundation, spend bed, even in this COVID time, even though times are hard, we have to start to think differently. We've gone from live to virtual. How are we going to make with that? So these three songs and the others would be telling us that in, in a nutshell, that we have to, you know, the revolution is here. So we have to accept the change and do it innovatively. I don't want to block anybody. I just want to reach out to the audience. And please, if you have any questions, you can type them up in the comment section um, and we will get to them and answer them because this is also part of the conversation we want to hear from you. And now back to my panel, please don't let me interrupt the flow. Humor, humor is, um, I, think, I think humor has always been the tool used, not because the writer was trying to be funny, but I think humor is the tool used because what they say is so real that it's funny, you know? And that's actually, that is when you check, like, for me, me who's a fan of spoiler. I don't feel spoiler is really so down trying to be that humorous, you know? I, I, the, the, the person I'm hearing in this song is, you can't be serious to so have a laugh, you know? And, and hence the reason why it's always a tool that, we just, we just remember because humor is something real now, you know. Uh, but these these people always been they've been making us look at self, you know. And so that's why we could we could see about saving from a spoiler or survival of being poor from a shadow, or you have a situation real who's telling you. Yeah, if your main career ain't working, you see that thing you start out doing in the first place, it's time to bring that into play. 
You understand? Because and I, I don't stop making music, but it's hard to use a trade. You understand? And what these artists keep we, we I just keep doing is that they keep making us explore ourselves now. So hence the reason why no matter what the situation, the pandemic, whether uh, epidemic, whether that deep, it is always be the source to go through. Because they are reflecting us, you know, <laughs> reflecting us. And, and that's that's their gift, right? As the as the Marista Society, as the people who bring forward the knowledge of self so that we may know self and learn to you know accept self and make whatever changes we may, we need to make. And and I, I agree with you, Charlene. You can't set out to try and be funny, you know. You just you have to you have to have it. <laughs> yeah, you know, all wrong there. Don't try to be funny. It just is, you know. <laughs> and and you, you can't really simulate that. That's why a lot of guys now trying to do do blantan and is barely antan to begin with, because they don't understand that there's a craft and a skill in that, and and yeah. how you how you use your words and how you play with words. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah I mean, there's a okay. skill there. But you know, um, what, what I admire, what is interested in all the majority of these songs here is that the message came across, the message is still there, and it was done in basically less than five minutes. Each selection was less than five minutes, you know? Some, you know, who will come with the humor, some will come with the serious um, lyrics, but the music was there, the message is there, and look, it was four or five minutes. Yeah, and I'm seeing, um, a, question yeah. coming up there in terms of like um, what yes. might be your favorite. I mean, I would have many. I would say Pretenders Never Ever Worry and Black Stalins um, Look on the Brighter Side. Look mm -hmm. on the Brighter Side. Surely let me hear you sing a chorus there, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I love brighter my two. Side, <laughs> look on the Brighter Side. But you know, while you're talking about that, I, I grew up hearing many of the spoiler songs and it's only when I got older I understood this one. Remember the, the chorus of this one? There was an Indian lady, she took a pound of flour and made a roti. She put the radio aerial inside the roti as partner. And you know she get news from Calcutta. <laughs> now it took me a while and I really realized he was talking about communication back in the day. <laughs> and I'm like, way boy. <laughs> so for the rest of the panel um, and for our audience, we have a question from Miss Barbara Jenkins. And I still find it hard to say her first name because that was my teaching. And I'm going to show her age. Um, she's asking all the panelists, is there a Calypso not on the playlist that you go to for comfort or support or encouragement in these COVID times? Right now it's Black Stalin for me. We could make it if we try. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just a little harder. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, Black Stalin for me and that same one, look on the brighter side that you, that you called earlier on. I made a decision somewhere in the middle of the... Um, lockdown to start listening to more Calypso and um, I don't regret that decision at all and I, I'm avid listener of Calypso but I wasn't really listening too much but I, there was a certain point in time when I needed to and the song that led me into it was We Could Make It If We Try so that is it for me right now in the COVID times many songs but that one is particularly strong Anybody else? I really think about um, um, Uncle Shadow's music. Mm -hmm. Music fills the world with happiness, plenty sweetness, and together. Yeah, then, you know, yeah, it's kind of like an anthem, you know. I would go with my belief because I always believe that things happen for a reason. So my belief is that song for me. Yeah. Well, I, I force it up my ass, right? Okay, now I go with my daddy. But it's not, it's not a song that most people will know now. I mean, it's one of the sweetest things he do in, his, in the lot of the out-of-the-box stuff he just do. Um, he has a song called Oh, What a Life. You know, he, I talk about... Um, Some people never had a chance to see the sunrise. Some people... Never had a chance to see the daylight, and he was just talking about 
even though these people they they had this opportunity they still live in this world and still survive in this world no matter what come in so my is what water like that's a hard that's a hard question miss jenkins i glad you all had songs in the tip of your tongue um <laughs> I like of all the songs on the playlist. Um, and oddly enough, if I were to pick a Calypso song right now, um, it would probably be, I say now I'm blanking on the name. And, and we sounded very biased because we were only picking shadow songs. But um, <laughs> it have to be, um, I think, now let's get together. Um, Somewhere along that, I actually I go to Soka Boat for everything. So um, there's something about the base in Soka Boat. I just go to Soka Boat for everything. I don't, I don't care what it is. Happy, sad, it don't matter. Soka Boat puts you in a place that will get you out of any any hard feelings. Um, and I want to thank you so much, Miss Jenkins, for that question. Um, and again, audience, we have a couple more minutes. So if you if you have a burning question. Please type it up and we will get it. We're here. As we're while well, we're waiting for um any other questions. Uh I would open up um Barbara's question. What song would you have put on the playlist to discuss today? Money is King, Rolling Tiger. One of my favorite money songs. Um <laughs> Uh, that's right. I, I love Growling Tiger. I think, oh my God, his voice. But you see, Money is King is, is quite special in the context of the of the, today's discussion. I always like Sparrow's education. Education? Yeah. Children go to school and learn well. Otherwise, later on in life, you will catch a lamp. You know, that was like one of my mantras, you know? <laughs> Uh, getting a request, Wendell, if you could sing a piece of the song because people don't know the song. I'm going to say the king. question again. What's up with money? money today, that one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a oldie but a goodie. It's a oldie but a goodie. Yeah. yeah I feel in shy all on a sudden, though. <laughs> request to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Basically, is a, if I'm an am on it today, people do not care if he a cool bay. If I'm an am on it today, people do not care if he a cool bay. He could commit murder and larceny, end up in governor's company. But if I miss the word there, let me chew too, but a dog is better than you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and for Charlotte, the question is what song would you have put on the playlist for today? Can you repeat it again? What song you would have put on the playlist for today? Ooh, it has so much, you know. Um, looking for horn. Um, um, shoo. Yeah, um, um, my, well, a couple of other stuff on my show. Show, yeah, 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 it's a plenty. But you can't see this cover, but I, I think, um, Looking for one who will be one of the top ones out of others. I had um, both Rios as well as one that I think we didn't discuss was um, Voices from the Ghetto. Because I believe Voices from the Ghetto and Poverty is Hell sort of expressing the same sentiments in different times. Yeah. <laughs> and that's to add sufferers to that. <laughs> yes. But I glad spicy caller female because all these songs here we have today is male songs. It's a, it's a I, can't understand, I can't understand how we could forget Francine. I want more Run away. money. They never sing no money. Plenty to money. No 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 money. Just like to point out to the audience, these songs were voted on yeah. from a wider list. <laughs> Don't make me lose voted yesterday. Like, like credibility as a feminist. <laughs> <laughs> there were voices. 
I agree with spicy voices, but ooh. Yeah. And I watched I watch the um it have a video that accompanied it. I'd never seen that particular footage to the song. And it just ooh, it was it was powerful. And sang Sandra. You know, one of the things that's that we didn't really talk about is how the songs were delivered, which for me is a big part of it. You know, it's not just what you're saying and if you hit any high notes, but the attitude, the delivery, the phrasing, you know, like when when um in this place nice, you know, when he disagrees with the chorus and then he comes back and he says, But I hear some people talking about revolution day, changes on the way. And so many inflections take place in those two or three lines, you know, or, or you know, sh- Rio as well is uh, half of it is delivery. You know, he just stands there and he delivers and he bounces in his timing. And you can't wait to get in on, on the delivery. So Voices from the Ghetto, I would say, is one of the most beautifully delivered songs in a long, long time. And you're correct, okay. Wendell, as you're talking about delivery. You're quite correct because Anyway, on a program, you put Uncle Valley. You could get 99 anchors before. And from the time he comes on, there's a quietness. And then he stays in the center stage. He might understand. And he delivers. So almost, you know, polished. Then he walks off with a resounding anchor to follow. Imagine you're putting, you're going behind that now. So delivery is very, very important. Same thing with Uncle Shadow. It is expected when this man comes out. And as I told Spicy, it was yeah before two, two years ago or so when she came by me, I had the honor years ago as being one of the background vocalists down by original Young Brigade. It was Judges Night. And he was singing Judges Jump. <laughs> and seven times the man was called back. But on his seventh time he walked straight down to the judges right in front of them and he said i want to catch them efforts in hell and have them jump (laughs) well well that was the mash out of the night and he walked back quite calmly while the crowd was just hysterical you know so it's these various sparrow as you know had his own unique versatile way of going about you know and each of the calypsonians we can get something out of them even if we might have disagreed with what they're saying. Also, that delivery is important. Yes, Pais. More than, more than the delivery of um, singing Sandra's voices in the ghetto. You see that red dress? <laughs> that red dress, the color red, the red it all represented so much more than just the pressure that was happening in the ghetto. Right, and like singing Sandra, singing Francine with more money. The pitch that she goes up to to say more money, (laughs) plenty money, is the cry for this money that she's talking about. So you know, yeah, it's all married. So I had to talk about the woman there, right? (laughs) Well done, spicy. Well done. Yeah. (laughs) Keep the balance. Keep the balance. Keep balance. We have um two more questions. Sorry. Sorry, go ahead, Charlotte, and then I'll go to the two questions. I just wanted to add that for me, Uncle Valley, I, as I kept telling me recently, he's a lyrical ninja. You don't know you're dead until he cut you. He's look harmless, harmless, same way this delivery. But I guess everybody had their own magic, type in something called charisma. And I think that was make him special. He sees he, that he humility so extreme that they wouldn't believe that this person cut in it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So we have two questions. Um, the first is from Ava, MD. So do you think that as a people, we have become more complacent over time as demonstrated by the transition from brother resistance, the people that um, taking that um, to full extreme? So do you think that, that we become more complacent? Well, when I look become... at the events that happened recently, I do agree that we have become complacent. I think what happened to us is that we just constantly need to be reminded. Constantly need to be reminded. And guess that is with these songs that's coming to play. 
every time it needs to be said, the forces and the spirits that govern the culture is always place it in our vessel for it to be said. You know? Uh, we, yes, we have a complacent personality, but I don't think we have become complacent. I mean, when you watch, when you watch recently the events that happen, you know, we will stand for something if given the reason. Agreed. I think we've become a lot more distracted by the trappings of, like you say, you don't like to say modern, but the trappings of, you know, now. So, and in a sense, many people aren't that familiar with these with these expressions or the potency of the expression. So, is it may come across as as complacency or disinterested or whatnot. But as Shalin rightly says, when there is cause or reason to be heard and seen, I think most people will discover that again in themselves. But, um, and, and this is one of the things that the COVID could take us into. And, you know, we had our own little Black Lives Matters moment there and that ain't, that ain't going nowhere. You know, these things still need to be addressed in many regards. Um, so yeah, we're in for interesting next rounds, I think. I like um, I selfish, we become more selfish as a people than less united, you know? I think it's more than becoming complacent. I agree. I agree, Devon. I think the selfish, the selfishness has overtaken even the the little complacency, you know, because it's just a a me me. Let me see what I can get out of this. Let me see, you know, and the sharing and the embracing, you know. But the COVID, as Wendell spoke about, it has gotten us into a new you know vision that we realize now it's all about survival so we really we can't do it alone we need to come together i think um more than complacent i think at from a artist perspective i think as artists we're not tackling the issues at hand head on because we're busy starting to compete now. So what we really need to say, we're not saying it. We're just saying what we think they need to hear safely, <laughs> you know? I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Wendell. I, 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 I <laughs> think that's screen. crucial. I think it's crucial in that yeah, the role of the artist at this point in time is one of the things we have to ask ourselves, you know? Like I was having a chat with a friend of mine who's a prolific soak artist and I was like, I'm challenging you to, to do more and sell a little bit more right now, you know. And I observe in the Trini Bad saying certain things and building a certain kind of vibration and, uh, and people being attracted to it. But I think soca in particular has gone off the rails and it's popular, but what it's saying, it didn't really say nothing about nothing. And then in many regards, like Calypso, I think Calypso has actually benefited from the COVID and the lockdown. And I'm seeing a lot more Calypso being profiled and certainly for the Calypso history month this, this time around, I think it was a lot more present and in your face than, than before. And it's to claim that space and build on that momentum. And also it's a good thing we spent the last two hours listening to what came before because we could learn and build on that we're not reinventing the wheel, you know. All the elements are there, you know, the humor, that hard look at your neighbor and say, what's now, you, you know, you were spending one fancy watch and this and that, and the other, whatever, and, and bring that vibration to now. I think that's critical. So I like the fact that you take on that responsibility as the artist to say, now it's time to say things, and it's how we're going to say these things, and not look to compete for a prize and write to get a prize kind of thing. I have a birdie whispering my ear, Wendell, um, that your the tree canal song, Good Morning Neighbor, directly addresses um, this, this selfishness, this growing individualism that we're seeing in our society. So, so Good Morning Neighbor speaks to the breakdown in community. You know, growing up in Belmont, growing up in a very strong community, very thriving community, a very varied community of all different levels of stations of life. But there was a mutual respect and a regard and a pride in community. And um, 
I am old enough to experience the first boom where people move and went Diamond Vale. And then by the time the second boom came around, that sense of community was severely impacted. So I agree that right now, you know, with all our material riches, um, there's a growing sense of selfishness and a lack of really checking, you know, and that, that community spirit that used to exist in certain places and still does to a great degree exist in many places. I think that is one of the things that's going to save us. Back to, back to basics, back to community. And Good Morning is a testament to that. And having sung a song called Good Morning, I have to take responsibility and make sure and tell people good morning when I see them. I can't lapse. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't understand what the question was, you know, with the other thing, you know, but um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, generally. all right. But I know I already jump in because um, when they say something which is a really important factor now, take responsibility, you know, I think that's the problem. You, 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 you kind of students need every day just take responsibility and says, there's the gift you have, which you need to be reached, you know? But, and, and even the people who are not interested in the teaching and reaching, you have to take responsibility for what you choose to do too, you know? Thank you. So uh, we have another question. And um, again, from Ms. Jenkins. So um, it's really, this one is more personal, I suppose, um, asking, you know, with no performance income, how are you making out in COVID times? Well, for me, it's writing more songs and everything that bothered me, this born of paper. And then I decide what people need to hear and what they hear. So that is what we're doing now with no money. <laughs> Anyone else? No money, but with love. <laughs> yeah. Try, you know. But what is happening is that, you know, I doing like, what is his name, Rio? So Rio was both a Calypsonian and a carpenter. So I'm using my other skills as well during this time, as well as, you know, putting down ideas, thinking about how to capitalize just what I'm and never seen utilizing the space. And not just utilizing this piece, but utilizing this piece effectively. Yeah, it's good to your piece. Well, as the General Secretary in Tuco in Calypso History Month, we would now be viewing, look, you know, November would be like the month for auditions. We're preparing for Carnival. So now we getting our mindsets transformed to a level of virtual thinking. Regardless, we know it have no carnival, yes, but we need to transform into that mode. Get a little more conscious with our writing skills, try to improve, read, read, read. Having been, you know, it, being now one of the students in the Masters of Arts of Carnival Studies program, you know, and, and, and getting into the books by Earl Lovelace, The Dragon Can Dance, and a very interesting book, I must say, I started reading it. You know, and if you are in Good Years King by Dr. Kim Johnson, the steel band movement, the whole history of the culture post pre emancipation, coming out of the slavery days, I mean, it has, to me, gained us a lot more on the educational aspect side because of the time, even though having not taken a day off from work, so we're working right through with the COVID, but still, you know. It's a, a new, uh, it's a renaissance. It's a cultural renaissance, a new awakening then, you know, we into something. So I must say, as much as we've been challenged by COVID-19, 2020 has brought us to another level. Well, I have a show on the November, online show on November 11th, a tribute to my father. So everybody looking at can look in. Um, yeah. <laughs> but right now, I want to talk to Spice about hiding my equipment because since I had time on my hand and I don't sleep in the night, every single moment is I just writing, writing, writing nonstop. I feel my guitar just shoots at me when you see me pass landing sometimes. I was making it harder is that I, because I'm responsible for my production. And so it's not just I write a song and I'm done, you know, 
I want to write a song, Bill I'll be completed, and I move on to the next one. Everything like, is a jumbi. So, uh, so right now, you just kind of just riding the wave and I mean, drawing from the cosmos and writing stuff down. It's, it's been an interesting time for me because I've been studying, reading our history, reading, you know, the books that tell us a little bit about who we are, listening to a lot of Calypso, um, trying to not consume so much news. I haven't been writing a lot in the early but then that started recently. It just like come in in Awaj. And um, I think with the announcement of No Carnival, as somebody who has, for the last, all my adult life, I've lived for the carnival and lived by the carnival. Um, okay, well, they say it's time to pivot, so it's time to pivot whatever that means. <laughs> but for me, that is an opportunity to tell stories, is an opportunity to ask questions. The no carnival is a quite opportunity for all of us to ask ourselves, well, what is carnival? What really mean to us, you know, and get a sense of what is important, what is essential and elemental that transcends time because forms change. Carnival form has changed. Just today I was reading about, you know, no, the carnival that didn't happen in, during World War I but they didn't happen on the streets. They still had events and yards and tents still operated and things of that nature. So that was a lesson, you know, that you know, maybe there are ways to bridge, to bridge the you new know, carnival and, and the carnival season or ritual time, because for me, carnival is a ritual, right? So how do we mark this ritual time? And for me, it's an opportunity to really tell stories about this ritual that we have and to ask questions of ourselves about what is this ritual that we have? Uh, so the, I see the big, there's a big opportunity with this no carnival for 2021. I think, um, first of all, I want to thank you all. This has been a very enriching conversation and we are about to wrap up as we are wrapping up. But I'd like to stay a little bit on this idea of canceling carnival and can we really cancel carnival and what does that really mean, um, especially from the creative sector. Um, and because I would say that you can't really cancel, can't, we could cancel the commercial aspects maybe. You could cancel tourists coming in, but can we really cancel that, that, that jumbi that's right us from the end of December to Ash Wednesday? Um, I like to tell, I always tell the story when I was studying in foreign, for some reason, there'll be a weekend from Friday, from uh, the Thursday night actually, about the Tuesday, I need to go somewhere. And then I would look at the can um, calendar and go, oh, it's carnival back home, that's why. You know, in the military studies, you're not really thinking about it, but your body telling you, you need to be out. You need to be with people. You need to be jamming somewhere. And is it that we could actually cancel that? Is that still the kind of spirit that invades us after Christmas, straight through carnival season? And how, how as creatives, how do we how do we address that? How do we find a space to make that happen? Uh, well, as I was listening to a webinar recently with um, Omari Ashby Rhoda Barrett and I think the president of the National Carnival Bands Association. And Omari was saying something, um, it was even a Facebook post. You can cancel carnival, but you can't cancel the ritual, you know, so we're not going on the road for Monday and Tuesday, but all the things that lead up to carnival, like for me, the artists, I am still going to have my songs that I would have had for the carnival. And we're still going to do these things that we would have done for the carnival, but we know what are our limitations at this point that's going out and gathering and that kind of thing. But I don't think as African people, we need um, a banter party. We don't need a banter party. <laughs> we don't need a banter freely express. So, you know, it's up to us. And while we, while you say we're closing up, we're wrapping up. Um, I am, when I leave here, I am on my way to work radio station where I'm going to be performing. All right. And on the 25th of November, 
I am also doing an online concert. <laughs> yeah, I'll plug in it one time. <laughs> Nice, nice plug, Spice, and I want to commend you for last night with the women that were featured on Iowa stage. So, girl, you say that we, and you're correct, that, you know, we don't need the band. Well, girl, I plugged the phone into the speaker box, and it was Shafford rocking like that. Because when Twiggy say, I want my man up on the me, you know, the whole of everybody was singing loud, you know, I want my man up on the me, you know, we, we haven't, um, we haven't gone against the government mandate. We stayed in our spaces, you know, understand me? And we knew that if we were in the gallery, of course we were in the gallery with the mask on, but we were all rocking. And later we're going to be the same thing, you know, when we see all the performing again. And every time we do a performance, that's how it is because we are, as Wendell said, a unique people who would find a creative way of enjoying ourselves, you know, like MX Prime would say, you know, the ultimate rejects. The thing might be canceled, but the thing going on still. And as soon as you see, one thing with Calypsonians, they have this sort of inner sustainable quality. As soon as you see, they get into the virtual thing even more. It's down the road we're going, you know. They can't stop us, you know. We just need to lock in into better marketing, management, and strategies to get it linked out there to even a wider base. Because right now, a wider cross-section of people, if it wasn't for COVID, we one might not have been in this situation where we're talking to each other in our own spaces, locally, regionally, and internationally. So here we have a means now of reaching out, you know, you could be in your own posh place, you know, with your teacup, your whatever you have with your refreshments, and you're listening to Kaiso history, you're listening to Kaiso discussions, and this is what we're talking about, you know. So to all Calypsonians, artists, soca artists, chutney, wherever you may be, it's not, we can't give up. We have to just reconform. You understand? Yeah, it's so true. So while there might be a, a number of limitations next year during the, the time, according to um, what Wendell would have mentioned, there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity because we know that over the past years, you know, we would have been seeing dwindling audiences that, most of the Calypso shows, I mean, now this is an opportunity for tent managers to become more innovative, to utilize that space. I mean, um, the fraternity, the Calypso fraternity are all up and ready. I mean, we are already in gear utilizing that space. So it's just a matter of becoming more innovative. The creativity cannot stop. The show must go on. And when I say the show must go on, that virtual space, taking up and utilizing that space is very important. And speaking on behalf of the Trinbago Unified Calypsonians organization, Calypsonians can rest assured that the space will be utilized. Creativity will not stop. Thank you. Um, thank you all so much. This was a very interesting conversation. And I hope the audience really enjoyed it as well. Um, we, we're not just here talking to ourselves. We're here talking for everybody. And I hope everyone uh, gets a deeper understanding of these ban your belly songs and how we could both ban our belly and jam still. <laughs> if you met yes, so <laughs> And I would like to leave you all now um, as we're closing out as someone ask for, for to hear some of these songs so i'm just gonna let the playlist run until we run out of time and i'll pick some for us don't care who migrate from where or who live in it who plays some for us don't care who from country Sufferers only want to know where the eggs are coming from. Thank <laughs> you.
That's my 